What it do? Hey, Tom Crew. Hey, man, listen, today I'm here to talk about the UFC fighters that are cooked. These are the fighters that need to throw themselves on a plate, add some seasoning, turn the microwave up to two minutes because they're cooked. They're absolutely done. And I'm going to go through every single division and just talk about my thoughts on these fighters. Starting off, most relevant in my opinion, a man that fought this weekend, brother, Tai Tuivasa. You're cooked. Tai Tuivasa, you're cooked like some KFC. Trust. Now, Tai Tuivasa is on a four fight losing streak. Not just that, a four fight finish streak, getting finished four times in a row. Got submitted by Marchin Tybura. And honestly, it's not even the fact that he lost to these fighters because these are all good fighters, right? I'm not going to compare this to Piotr Jan losing three in a row or four out of his last five against tough competition because he did fight better people, but. Taitu Ivas has only lost to people ranked in the top 10. So we can't hate on him too much. That's not why I'm saying he's cooked. I think he's done because of his mentality, because of his work ethic, dude. He's switching camps every single fight. Like I made that video a few months ago about UFC fighters that are washed, I showed him training in a fucking public gym during the middle of like a cardio kickboxing class. This dude's running up and down the machines. I, I knew he was cooked at that fight. I thought he had a chance in this one. And then it was brought to my attention that there was Taco Bell in this motherfucker's locker room before the fight, dude. Tai Tuivasa, what are you doing, bro? So, yeah, I think he's done. If he gets cut from the UFC, people are asking me, oh, is he going to BKFC? Maybe, to go Maybe he's going to BK. Maybe he's going to KFC, but he ain't going to fucking BKFC, dude. I just don't think he wants it anymore, but it is sad to see a fellow Australian lose. Um, I do have a sick Tai Tuivasa shirt. Since I bought it, he has never won a fight, so I may have jinxed him. I'm really sorry, Tai. But yeah, I'm going to put Tai Tuivasa in here for the heavyweight division. Let's move on to the light heavyweight division. I mean, on paper, uh, I'm still the best fighter in the UFC. Dude, Anthony Smith, throw yourself on a plate, brother. Add some seasoning. You're fighting Vitor Petrino next in Brazil, <laughs> dude. This guy's fucked, dude. He's literally just coming off the most brutal, like, baby edits of him laying on the canvas against Khalil Roundtree, bro. This Scooby-Doo ass knockout. And he's back. Before Khalil Roundtree comes back, this guy is coming back. And he's fighting Vitor Petrino, basically fighting TRT Vitor um, in Brazil. I really hope that goes well for him, but I'm very worried about Anthony Smith, and I think he may be, in fact, cooked. He, you know, I need, to, I need to stick a fork in it. I need to cut it open, you know, look at, you know, is it, oh, God, I was about to say, is it pink, you know, but, you know, looking at the color of the meat, is it cooked? I believe it may be cooked, but uh, we shall see at UFC 301. This could end very badly, or I could be completely wrong, and I would love to be wrong, because I like Anthony Smith, but he's looking pretty cooked at the moment. Um, especially based on his next fight. Speaking of being fucked for your next fight, Cody Brundage, say goodbye, brother. So, moment of silence for my boy Cody Brundage. Shout out to him. Bro's about to be a UFC 5 career mode tweet. I can't believe at Bo Nickel got this KO in round one from Michael Bisping on career mode. That's about to be you, brother. You're cooked. You're done. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like I feel for Cody Brundage. He's getting put on the main card. You know what Dana White wants. You know what Dana White is telling Bo Nickel to do? He's telling him to highlight reel this man and do it on pay-per-view. It's just a fucked situation. I wish he was fighting like a reasonable matchup, but we just saw Bo Nickel kill two minorities back-to-back, -back, so I guess they needed a, you know, an anti-diversity hire. They needed a white guy in there to fight him. Um, and it just happened to be Cody Brundage that they chose. Rest in peace to a real one. I'm praying that he wins. I literally would not be more happy in life than if Cody Brundage chins Bo Nickel, out cold, um, bot Nickel, takes him out cold, but I don't think he will. I think you're cooked, brother, because after this, you're getting sent straight to the apex. <laughs> you're getting straight, bro, you're getting put straight into cryotherapy in the apex, getting ready to be fed to a debuting fighter at middleweight. Um, it is what it is. Cody Brundage, rest in peace. Let's move on to another fighter that recently passed over in terms of his career. Mike Mallott, say goodbye, brother. You're done, brother. Hang it up, brother. I'm just kidding. I like Mike Malott. He seems like a good dude. But you got to admit, dude, you're pretty cooked if you're getting finished by my by Neil Magny, bro. You, you know that it's got to be a thing of like, fuck, let's try and get some fun fights, dude, because the rankings are not looking so fun anymore. Getting finished by Neil Magny, not a good look, 
not a good outcome. I mean, we saw what happened to the GOAT D-Rod after he got finished by Neil Magny. He was never the same. You know, Shavkat, when he got finished by Neil Magny, real, real ones know that happened. He was never the same. So I am worried for Mike Malott going forward because he's only getting tough matchups now. The reason that he's cooked is in terms of his ranking in the, in the welterweight division too, because they shot him up to fight Neil Magny. So now he has to fight someone with like a big name, someone that's pretty proven. You can't really shoot him back down the rankings and go, all right, we'll give you Mike Jackson or we'll give you Pete Rodriguez. You know what I'm saying? We, you're going to have to fight like a Themba Garimbo or you're going to have to fight like Li Jing Liang or, you know, Michael Chiesa, some shit like that where he might lose because these are, they're only hard fights in that just outside the rankings of the welterweight division. Now, if you go down a little bit further, you can get some Ws, right? He's a good fighter, but I am worried about his standings in the welterweight division. If you're getting finished by Neil Magny, brother, you're cooked. Let's move on to the lightweight division. This is a man who for some reason will not stop cooking fried chicken in his house. Manel Cup, you're next. Michael Chandler. Why is this guy cooked? You might be thinking, okay, he's a top five lightweight, bro. He, he's one of the best fighters at lightweight. Brother, this guy has literally, in the time that this guy has not fought, I have started a YouTube channel, gained 20,000 subscribers, and fought one time. I fought more than Michael Chandler in the past year, okay, dude? And this guy is 37 years old, I believe, maybe 36, and he's trying to get a fight with Conor McGregor, who is literally doing a press tour for a movie right now. Conor McGregor is not anywhere near an MMA gym signing for a fight, bro. He is literally sitting in a fake roadhouse right now. You know yourself, Jake Gyllenhaal, you know, you've done about 75 movies. I'm very happy to be working with you. But I've done about 75 facial reconstructions in my fights. So I believe I am equally experienced for this job. And I, I, I think we should move on. I think we should do a Terminator reboot next. And I can be the Terminator and you can be um uh, whatever the fuck the kid's name was. You can be him. Yeah, let's fucking do it, brother. He's fucked. You're cooked, Michael Chandler. You're fucked. Because either you get this corner fight and you're 39 years old, weighing in at middleweight, and Connor on the day of the fight, you know what, brother, let's do it at 155, and you fucking, you miss weight, <laughs> and give him 30% of your purse, and you get chinned, hot take, or, you don't get the Connor fight, he either fights Nate Diaz, or retires, and Dana White just said, just beefs with him, and you end up fighting fucking Mateus Gamrot, at 38 years old, bro, <laughs> Michael Chandler, throw yourself in the oven, brother, turn up that heat, all right, add sprinkle some salt on top, brother. You're cooked. Let me move on to the featherweight division. And this is a sad one, bro. This is a real sad one. <sighs> Look at his picture, bro. He literally has no... Oh, God, dude. Oh, who's going to tell him that he shouldn't take the rematch, bro? Who is going to tell Volk that this rematch ain't happening? And if it does, you're, fu you're cooked, brother. He's 30. He's 35, dude. He's 35. And you know what makes me so sad? He can't even change weight classes. He can't go up to, to 55 because he's still going to be cursed with the, you know, 35-year-old curse. He can't go up to 170. It, it, he, what, what is he going to do, bro? What is he going to do? Either he has to just fight nobodies at featherweight and become the gatekeeper. Or you fight Taporia, get chinned again, then you're really fucked. Now you're speed running a BJ Penn type downfall. Either you're going to be Dustin Poirier at 145 and get finished by the champion every two years, or you're going to be BJ Penn, bro. And I don't want to see that from one of the greatest fighters of all time. The greatest Australian fighter. Fuck it. The greatest Australian athlete of all time. Dead serious. This guy's the GOAT. Okay, this guy's one of my fucking heroes. I don't want to see him go out like that, bro. I would honestly rather him just retire. Just go into the sunset, retire. You know, I'm the top of guy. I had a good legacy, you know. And I, I decided to just leave it where it lies, you know, and move on and be with the family, you know, training in the gym. I'm going to be coaching my guys to the lightweight title and all that, you know. Um, you know, watch, watch what happens over the next couple of years, yeah? Watch how, watch how many belts we get. That's what I want to hear from Volk, dude. I don't want to hear him being like, mark my words, I'm getting the belt back, bro. Bro, you're cooked. You're 35. Please don't do this. Don't don't fucking go down this path, Volk. Um, otherwise you're cooked. All right, Volk's my pick for featherweight. It's sad to say, somebody had to say it. Somebody had to do it. Let me move on to the bantamweight division. Rob Font, bro. Look at the build of this dude. Rob Font, you're cooked, bro. I was gonna put Cheeto, but he's really not because he, nothing's changed. He was always a fluky flukester. 
who can't beat anyone really good, um, especially Sean O'Malley. I'm not going to say he can't beat anyone good. That's disrespectful, but he was never going to beat Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley got fluked, and he proved it. So Rob Vaughn is my pick simply because you are like a high-output, skillful boxer, but you don't have like the KO power of like a Calvin Cater, and you don't have the chin of Calvin Cater either. So you have all the skills. You have enough durability to survive to a decision, but you also get dropped in every round and you don't have the power to really drop them back. It's just sad, dude. It just makes me sad because Rob Font's so talented. I love Rob Font. He's awesome to watch. Um, but it is sad to watch this dude take a lot of damage and, you know, take short notice fights, be a badass, step up, just take damage, you know, fall down the rankings when he is such a dangerous competitor with based on his skills, you know? Like him versus Jose Aldo. Badass fight. His chin... Kind of got in the way of that. Che Cheeto. He was beating up Cheeto and he'd get chinned, bro. It was so annoying. So, Rob Font, respectfully speaking, I think he's a bit cooked. I, I, would, I would like to see him maybe change divisions or, you know, take a real long time off. Maybe, you know, start looking for, like, money fights in the division. And, yeah, I don't like seeing guys take a lot of damage when they're really talented. They're really cool. Um, Rob Font's one of those guys that I really respect and I, I don't like seeing him take that damage. So, respectfully, I'm going to say he is a bit cooked. Um, I'm hoping that he's okay and that, that maybe he comes back with a win, you know. Listen, I know there's there was beef when he KO'd my boy Adrian Yardes, bro. But we're cool, all right? Respects to Rob Font. Last one, who is absolutely cooked at flyweight. This one, there's no respect. Alejandro Pantoja, you're cooked. Say goodbye. Your days are numbered. There's no way out of this one. You are fucked, bro, because you have to fight the flyweight goat, Steve Bedtime Urseg. I mean, come on, dude. This guy's absolutely cooked. He's going to get melted in Brazil. He's going to get melted like an ice cream in the sun. Trust. Um, when that Steve Urseg left hook first connects, he's going to be shooting for the legs. He's going to get out scrambled. He's going to get beat up over, uh, over 25 minutes, just like Glover Teixeira, Jamal Hill. That's the type of performance I'm expecting from the flyweight goat of the future, Steve Urseg. I really believe he's about to go on a Mighty Mouse level title run where he's headlining fight nights. He's defending the belt on the prelims, you know what I'm saying? He's putting up ultimate fighter, you know, fight night title defenses. I feel like Steve Urseg's going to be fighting on fucking Bellator in like a cross promotion. That's how little of a fuck I think the UFC will give um, about the flyweight division once Steve Urseg decides to go Thanos mode and just snap out the entire division, including Pantoja. So Pantoja, count your days because you are, you are on borrowed time. You're cooked. And the first title defense will be Lucas Tracy, who will also get chinned um, via 50-45 decision. But this is my list of UFC fighters who are cooked. Let me know your thoughts down below. And when do you guys want to see me versus Lucas Tracy? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to make it happen, but, you know, it is what it is. If I need to get the flyweight belt to defend it against him, that's what I'll do. But let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, guys, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel for the blob tier list. Coming tomorrow, I promise you, okay? I just didn't have the energy for it today, so I'm going to do it tomorrow. And yeah, subscribe for the blob tier list. Go follow me on Instagram at Bedtime MMA for my picks for this weekend's fights because I'm not doing them on YouTube. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video, boys. Goodbye. Petosia, you're next!